female. Thanks, guys. Welcome, everybody, to the New Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. In today's show, we're going out on Tosogamy Lake, fly fishing for huge northern pike. This is a place I've always dreamed to go. It's legendary for big pike. I'm here with Robert, he's gonna take me out. We're gonna be talking about tackle techniques and how you can catch big northern pike on a fly rod. Stay with us, it's gonna be a great show. Let's go. I will catch these all day. That is what you're in for on this episode. In today's show, we travel to the wilds of Northern Ontario. Kasagami Wilderness Lodge is located to the northwest of the small town of Cochrane. I drove to Cochrane and stayed overnight at the Swan Castle Inn. In the morning, we went to the air base for a relatively quick float plane flight to Kasagami. Today, my guide is Stuart Loriman. He's a passionate angler and relatively new fly fisher. Stuart understands how great this fishery is for all anglers, but particularly fly fishers, because it's mostly shallow water focused. From top water to shallow running streamers, they will all work here to catch big pike and walleye but you still have to be versatile to the conditions. And that is why our guide is so valuable. It didn't take long before I hooked my first pike. So what just happened was I, I saw a fish follow. You could see down below in the darkness. I don't know how big this guy is. Oh yeah, he's not bad. And uh, he saw the boat, he spooked, and so we just moved a bit and I cast back to the same spot, which is where I'd seen him drive off and sure enough, he was waiting and he took it. Oh, nice fish. Oh, and this is why I love catching pike. Look at that. Oh, strong. This is probably about a 36 inch fish. I can't get him coming towards me. Oh, no, there he goes. Not happy. Okay, I got his head up. You got a measuring tape, uh, yep. Stu? Yep. Okay, great. Oh. Look at that run. Yeah. All right. Nice and thick. Get his head up. He's ready for another jump here. Can't get him on here. Excellent. Okay. So there's gonna be a lesson to learn there. A lot of times when you have the fish follow, and even if they see the boat and they you see them go off, don't give up on them make another cast out and strip it back. And I actually just gave it a couple quick pulses and he hit on the second uh, little uh, twitch I gave the fly. That's the nice thing about these tube flies I'm using is down about a foot and a half and it's perfect for this type of fishing because I can really put a lot of action on the fly. Now you'll notice that Stu's using a cradle. Here at Kasagami they use cradles for all their uh, fish and they try to keep them in the water. They'll bring them out for a quick photo sometimes but th the bottom line is they're trying to protect the resource. This is a total catch and release fishery, which is why it's so fantastic. Good stuff. Get that out. Thirty-two. Thirty-two. So it's a little bit long in my length, but uh, it looks like oh, nice thick, heavy specimen. We got a nice scratch on the back there, probably uh, post spawn markings, eh? Yeah. They get. We've actually had a lot. A lot of big fish with some big scars on them this year. Oh, look at that, look at that. What a hunter killer. Okay, let's see if we can get a 40 incher now. Oop. Let's try it. Got a little bonus in my arm. <laughs> Has he got any size to him, do you think? I haven't seen him yet, but he's going for my stick. There he goes. Oh, look at that, look at that strength. I guess you won't be changing your fly. <laughs> nope, I don't think so. <laughs> 
So what are you doing to fight that fish? Do you try reversing it so you put on uh, uh, the opposite direction from the, where the fish is going so it puts uh, more pull on them? Yeah. I'm just trying to keep it from... We get a lot of fish that try to dive under the boat to use the boat as like a pivot point to try to kick the hook out. But he doesn't seem like he wants to come anywhere near the boat right now. Okay, well I'm just gonna move over here. Get ready to help Stu. Well, we're floating now. These are great boats, by the way. Nice and wide, so it's great for a fly fisherman. Well, this guy's got some shoulders. I still haven't seen him yet. There he is. Oh, that's a nice, oh, that's a nice fish. Oh, well done. <laughs> well done, Stu. And what he did is uh, we discussed what the best approach was and his top recommendation was, let's go find them on the flats, find some weed beds, look for structure, and we'll just hit them real fast. So we've been shotgunning around the lake and it's paying off, right? Yeah. We found some hot fish, which is great. Because it doesn't matter, even if, though you're up here in the north, you still got to find fish that are active. Okay, what do you think? Is he almost ready? He's still pretty Nope, great. I lost oh. him. So, I said he uses the boat as a pivot point. Oh well, we'll get another Ooh. one. Good fish, good fish. That was great. Well, we caught some nice pike this first afternoon and quite a few walleye, but still, no true monsters. However, the next day was gonna teach me a lot of important lessons, especially about shallow water pike fishing. Oh, there he is. It's a big fish too. Oh, gotta get him on the... So Stuart and I have been fishing this weed bed you can see all around us, and we haven't been seeing anything. Ooh. Get the reverse on him. And he took uh, my tube fly that I've been using. It's about six, six to seven inches long. Oh, look at this thing. And uh, I said he missed it the first time. Pike have got a uh, small window in front of their faces where they can't see. It's the way their eyes are designed. They're not stereoscope. Okay, I'll bring him in. Reverse him. Now I've got 30 pound wire on this uh, with a 50 pound short leader. And I'm using actually, um, believe it or not, a type three full sink line, which it's only three feet deep here. But I'm just trying to get that fly down in the water column and I'm retrieving real fairly quickly. Okay. I'll come towards you a bit. Oh, look at that. All muscle. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Magnificent. What a what a predator. Nice fish. Yeah, this guy's already ready to go. I can tell by the way he's moving, but I'll just get him out of here a bit. There he goes. Wow. Whew. Let's get another one. What I really like about Kasagami Lake is that it's shallow. The deepest spot is approximately 12 feet, with the average depth being about approximately 8 feet. The northern pike are quite comfortable with coming into very shallow water to hunt prey. The stained water provides them with limited protection, and any weed cover is also used. This is perfect for fly fishers. Easy casting, and you can often see the fish strike. For sight fishing, this is exciting. When the lake warms up, the northerns will move up into the shallows, into all the weed beds, where uh, it's the temperature's a little more controlled, into their ideal temperature of 68 to 65 degrees. Uh, by doing, by moving up into these weed beds, they, there's one. So, I was using your uh, that fly you gave me, that there that uh, little tube fly, just clobbered it. Not a very big one, but it'll do. Did you get one? I've got a walleye. See, that's the thing about Kusagami. It's got so much 
so much fish, there's so many fish here and, and it's so fertile. But as uh, Stuart was talking about earlier, it's such a shallow lake. It's, it's ideally suited for fly fishers because basically everywhere you go, there's fish. I mean, we go to points, we go to weed beds, we go to all types of things. And in amongst the northern pike, of course, who are coming in to feed on the walleye, are more walleye. That, that just shows why the northerns up here are so big. They've been eating walleye like that their whole lives. They've been moving up into these weed beds where the walleye are. And then we're fishing those weed beds to, get, to catch the northerns eating the walleye. A nice walleye. It's amazing. You know, most places I go, you can't catch walleye. There he goes. You can't catch walleye on a fly, but here, it's so easy. They're everywhere. Well, the warmer the temperature, the bigger the kill zone, because their metabolism will be up. Then, as the water gets colder, that kill zone gets smaller, meaning you have to put that, the fly, the streamer, or the leech pattern right in front of their face. With our northerns, in the spring, the, the leash pattern is usually our best pattern because it's a high source of protein with little to no gain, like they don't have to go out of their way to go for it. Uh, but as the water temperature gets hotter here, they, their metabolism will increase. They'll start going into the weed beds looking for perch, walleye, and suckers. It's a well-known fact that the kill zone for pike, like any predatory species, will increase and decrease based on water temperature, which in turn influences metabolism. When the water temperature for pike is in the optimum range, they are quite aggressive and will move six to 10 feet in pursuit of prey. As anglers, we must keep this in mind when fishing. If the water temperature is cold, we will probably need to be more thorough in our search of a given piece of water. Whoa, whoa. Gotta get this clear, he's going out to sea. Oh boy. So, wow. Oh, he's coming towards the boat. Gotta get him on. So what was happening is I was making short casts and working any structure we could see. We're in about two and a half, three feet. I know it's hard to believe. And I just had a walleye take a grab at my fly. Next cast just a little bit over to the right, and this guy came out and just hammered. Oh, that's a nice looking fish. Look at him. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna try and get him in, because we're getting into Ready? shallow water. Yep. All right. Okay. Outstanding. This is where, with these cradles, is a bit of a two-man operation. Okay. 40 inches. Yeah, I'm off. <laughs> So we got our first 40 inch fish, which is great. And what's really great is there's fish, what you got a 55 here a couple years ago, and yep. lots of 45 to 50 inch fish. That's what Kasagami is known for. All right, I'm just gonna pick them up quick here. In fact, you got, you got the glove? I'll give you the honors, you go ahead. If you wanna tell them and uh, bring them around, I'm just gonna get the rod out of the way here. I'd say he's uh, pretty much ready to go. <laughs> Look at this thing. This thing is just this huge killing machine. Look at that. All muscle. Look how thick. He's like that thick across. Beautiful fish. All right, let's let him go. As soon as he's ready. Now, the, you see a bit of redness in his back? That's from, again, a little bit of stress from his uh, spawning time. That'll go away in time. He's got a cut in the back, too as well as a big lesion on the side. And away he goes. Just melts into the bottom. We're only, what, foot and a half here. Good job, Stu. Nice People come to Kasagami year after year uh, because of the quality of the fishing, but also the service, and I have to say the total experience. Uh, an experience at Kasagami is like no other. You're well taken care of, 
uh, opportunities for wildlife viewing, just being here amongst uh, the, the type of people that we attract as well. Some people have been coming for 30 years. I have many guests that will often come book the same week as their friends. It's a great camaraderie here at the lodge and they take home with them every year a wonderful experience. I really enjoy being outside and it's so quiet and beautiful. And today we saw a caribou, you know, walking along the beach and it was great. It's a great experience and uh, obviously we're going to be coming back, so. I love the wilderness and I, you know, I love northern Canada. It's just a magnificent country and uh, there's not a lot of it left. I'd like to say it's, you know, it's gotten better since we've been coming up here and this is our 14th time in 16 years. The fishing keeps getting better. I think the way they've managed the fish up here has ensured that uh, big pike stay here and the walleye, I know, have gotten bigger, they've gotten more numerous since, since we first came up here. The next day I joined experienced guide Robert Chum. Robert has been living in this region for most of his life and has a passion for this wild land. He promises that today we're going to find some really big pike and I'm truly stoked to bring one to my fly. Perfect. We're fly fishing right now and we're hitting some patches of cabbage and, and grass, different types of structure. And one of the things is a lot of people think you need to have uh, specialized leaders for pike fishing. The reality is you need simple, real simple. A lot of people uh, think you need a tapered leader just like you do for trout. You don't. If you watch this animation, it'll explain some of the different types of leaders you can use that are very effective for pike and muskie and will make sure you don't have bite offs. The leader and tippet system I like to use for big pike is simple. A six foot length of stiff and heavy mono in the 30 to 40 pound test range is used to help turn over big flies. To this, I attach an 18 to 24 inch piece of knotable bite wire. The new wire leaders available today are easy to tie with, even in the 30 to 40 pound class. A simple loop to loop connection is used between the leader and wire tippet. The system is simple and never seems to fail me when angling for big toothy pike or even muskie. There you go. There you go. That's a nice one. Oh. Oh, oh he's got some power. Oh, yes. Oh, oh. There you go around. He fights so well. Yeah. Okay. This one's nice and thick. Oh yeah, fat fish. Look at this. Okay. Alrighty. Alrighty. Yippers. See it? Look at that. Nice fishy. Whoa. Oh, look at that. All power. As you can see the fly down here in the water, that's what's working. Got him? Yeah, I think so. Oh, Give me a line burn. You see the mouth on that thing? Yes, sir. Oh. 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 The big fish. Up. Go, go, go. Oh, my goodness, did he hammer that. Oh. Got him? Yeah, I got him. Right on. Right on. He's going out to sea. Oh, yes, he will. He's not liking this hook. Nope. Watch your hand. Ooh. Look at him go. I wish the camera could have seen that. That was unbelievable. Okay, almost under our back in here. <laughs> this is where fighting butt. Now, oh, oh. strong fish. Big fish. Big fish. Beautiful. Excellent. All right. And what a take. So aggressive. Nice. And shaking a bit. I love surface fishing for big pike. This is so much fun. Look at that, eh? Oh, there we go. Um, see you later, girl. See you when you're 54. 55. <laughs> Good job. Man, Thank good you. job. That was great.
The sun had come out and Robert recommended we try a new weed line. As always, his valued knowledge helped me locate the biggest fish of the trip. How's she feel? Uh, feels pretty good. Yeah? It's hard to tell how big he is, so yeah. it's quite an explosion. Awesome. He's going out to deeper water, which is typical of the bigger fish. <laughs> so he's just inside the edge of these lily pads. And out here, we've got cabbage. Look at that. Look how far out he's gone. Oh. <laughs> Look at that bulge. <laughs> What's incredible about the fish here, unlike pike and other places, how thick they are. They obviously eat very well. They've got good genetics. Okay, there he comes. Come on, baby. Come to Robbie. Come to Robbie. Come to Robbie. Oh, yes, right. baby. Oh, big Look baby. At Look at Look that dog. fish. Look at that. Look hog. at that. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? Look at that. Beautiful female. Years. Look at the girth on that baby. Okay. Let's see what, 20 pounds? 25 pounds? Yeah. Okay. 20 to okay. 25. That's precious, that. Look at that. Look at that. Good job. Good job, well done. 41. 41. Now let's find 45. Yuppers! What a great time I've had here at Kasagami Lodge. If you have not fly fished for Northern Pike, I strongly recommend you do so. As you have seen, the action is incredible. Yes, to learn more Come about the show or our series, please visit us on the World Wide Web at thenewflyfisher.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Mark Melnick. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe today. Now we're putting up brand new videos all the time. So if you want to be notified when a new one goes up, click that bell icon and it'll come to you as soon as it's uploaded.